All right, how are you doing today, guys? Welcome back to another day of seven great math. And today is actually Cinco de Mayo. So, and today we're actually gonna be doing the the part three of the mock star review that we took uh, on the previous videos. So this is the final part. It's about thir thirteen questions as well. It's just mixed questions about seven great maths. It includes a, a variety of ticks. And uh, before we start, please go ahead and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you haven't subscribed to my other channel, I'll leave a link for you up here, MTV Alex. Go ahead and check that one out. It's pretty fun, mountain bike and DIY stuff. If you want to support this channel, link down in the description. And if you haven't seen the previous videos for this review, make sure you check those out as well. Other than that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so number one, we have Zachary is buying four tires for his car. The table shows the prices and the advertised sales for the same type of tire at four tire at four different tire stores. And then they show us the table. They have stores RSTV. They have the price per tire. And then they have also some kind of sale going on different on every single store. What we want to know is where he will get the lowest price for all tires. So we're gonna compare the, the sales, the price per tire, and also figure out the discounts and see which one is gonna get the better deal. So for example, on store Air R, we have $150 for, per tire, but they say if you buy three tires, the fourth one is free. So for store Air R, all we gotta do is multiply this one by three and when we do that we get 450 so on store r you will spend a total of 450 dollars for the four tires because i don't need to pay for the four tire this is what he's saying right here the fourth one is free now let's compare that to store s store s says there's 200 dollars per tire so if you buy four this is $800, right? So it says buy four tires and receive 70 off the price of each tire. So if you buy the four of them, you're gonna t pay $70 less for each one of the tires, correct? So instead of 200, you can do it different ways. So instead of 200, it'll be 200 minus 70, which is uh, $130 per tire. And then this times four, 130 times 4 gives you a total of $520. Or if you were to take the $800 and then do a separate operation over here, 70 times 4 gives you 280. Then you can take this away from the 800 and it will give you the same answer. So, so far, store S is more expensive so i don't care about store s you see what's happening right now i'm trying to find who has the, the the best deal and this is something that many 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 people i do it every time if i want to buy something that is sold for at different stores i try to select the one that i'm gonna pay the less for if there's somebody does price match then i go to whatever one because they're gonna do a price match for whatever the cheapest price is so this is actually a real life scenario and situation. Let's see the next store, store T, $175 per tire. But if you buy the four tires, you get $200 off the total price. If you buy the four tires, you get $200 off the whole price. So if the tires are $175 and you buy four of them, this is $700. But then you're gonna take away $200. This is $500. Store T is still more than store R, correct? So it's still not a bad deal. Now let's see, store V. It says $130 per tire. So if you buy four tires, you're gonna spend how much? $520, right? If you multiply 130 
times four, you get uh, $520. But then they're gonna give you a 10% off the total price if you buy four of them, right? So you gotta multiply that times, you gotta find the markdown. And there's a different ways to do the markdown. So I'm gonna bring this down over here. So to find the markdown, you're gonna have convert percent to decimal, subtract from one, and then multiply by the total. So 10% is equals to 0 0.1. We're gonna subtract that from one, and we're gonna get 0 0.9, or 90, right, 0 0.90. And then we can multiply that times 520. So 520 times 0 0.9 gives you $468, which is still more than the first store. So my answer has to be store R. You cannot stop just because you, the second one got bigger. So you don't know what the last one is going to be. I went ahead and compare everything. The other way to do this one, you can multiply 520 times 0 0.01, and you get, no, 520 times 0 0.1, and you get $52. And then you can take that away from the 520, and you also get 468. Either way is going to give you the same answer. Whatever you like better. That's the way you work number one. It is time consuming, yes. So, but it's not hard. All you have to do is do what they're telling you on each one of those uh, options. Let's look at number two. We have another table. When we look at tables, remember we have X and we have Y, always in that order. It says, at a school carnival, tickets can be purchased to practice in different activities. The table shows the total cost for different numbers of tickets. What is the constant of proportionality that relates Y to the total cost in dollars to X, the number of tickets purchased? So this is going to be a proportionality questions, and this formula is given to you on the formula sheet k equals y divided by x and all we have to do is divide y divided by x the formula if you scroll down is given to you on every single time every single time you take a test that you need a formula the formula is going to be in this case right here let's wait for it to load right here constant of proportionality when you, when you look at tables that have two columns, go look at that formula. K equals Y divided by A. K stands for constant of proportionality. Let's go back to the question. What is the constant of proportionality, K, that relates Y to the total cost in dollars to X, the number of tickets purchased? So all we gotta do is Y divided by X. So if you, K equals Y divided by X, and all I have to do is substitute the values in. So if I look at this one, I do two divided by eight, which is how much? One quarter, which is 0.25 and my answer is G now you can do that with any one of these numbers right there so if I pick that one it's very simple I just do that one so for that one instead of 2 over 88 I'm gonna do 5 over 20 if I divide by 5 I get 1 and I will I get 4 and this is also 0.25 and that's it that's it so that means that every ticket is 25 cents 
Using the formula gets you there right away. Let's look at number. If you have any questions about constant or proportionality or proportions, I have a full playlist about that. I try to leave it a link or a card over here on top, or you just go to my channel, go to my playlist, and you'll find it right there. Let's look at the next one. Number three, it says, a, a drawing of a sailboat was measured using a rectangle and two right triangles as shown. What is the area of the sailboat in square centimeters? Record your answer in the bubbles on your answer document. Okay, so basically this is a numeric response. We don't have a multiple choice for this one. So this is area of composite figures and I also have a full playlist about this one. So if you have any more doubts after we go over this one right now, please go ahead and check that list playlist out. I leave a link for you up here and let's move on to this one. So the good thing about this is that they're telling us that they made the measurements using a rectangle and two right triangles. We have that one right there and we have this one right there. Two different ones. So basically to find the area of the composite figure, we have to find the area for each one of those shapes. I was I just showed you the formula chart on the previous question, so I'm not gonna go back to that. But the formula for a rectangle is just area, base times height, and that's it. And the formula for the triangles is base times height divided by two. So we're gonna have to do those formulas. And we're gonna use the numbers that we have. So for the rectangle, all I have to do is multiply 12 times 2.5. And when I do that, what do I get? 12 times 2.5, I get 30. So the blue one is gonna be 30 centimeters square. That's for the blue one. And then let's look at the right, at the pink triangle. For the pink triangle, we have base right here at the bottom, and the height is gonna be the same height for both of them. So it's gonna be six times two. So this is gonna be six times two, then divided by two. Six times two is 12 divided by two, which gives you six. So this right here is six centimeters square. And then we do the same thing for the red one, the right, the other right triangle. In this case, it's gonna be six times three divided by two. So this is 18 divided by two, which is nine centimeters square. And to find the area, the composed area, this was actually a pretty simple question for the star test. All we have to do is add them all up. So we have 30 plus 6 plus 9. 30 plus 6 is 36 plus 9 is 45 centimeters squared. And how you put it on the gridable? Like that. Plus zero zero four five zero zero. That's how you fill in a gridable. Of course, you have to bubble it as well. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question. Number four, we have dot plots. Show the, uh, the dot plots show the numbers of children's books purchased by customers at two different bookstores in one day. So again, we are comparing data and I think I also have a playlist about this. If, but I for sure have more problems about dot plots. Even if I don't have the playlist, which I'm pretty sure I do, make sure you check them out. Just type in data or dot plots and you'll find the videos on my channel as well it says uh so basically what we have to do right here is gonna be compare we're gonna have to compare every single statements to whatever is at the top so let's see store one 
zero number of books purchased. So two people did not buy. So each one of these dots represents one person. Each dot represents one person, okay? Buying a book. So on store one, there were one, there was one, two, three, four, five people who bought two children's books, for example. There were five people that bought four children's books, for example. On store two, there were like one, two, three, four, five, six people who bought one book. There were four people who was walking in the store but didn't buy anything. There was one person who bought six books. That's, wh that's what each one of those that means, okay? Number of people. It says, which statement is supported by the information in the dot plots? And we're just going to have to compare. There's nothing else we can do but compare. If the mode of the data for store 2 is greater than the mode of the data for store 1. Remember, when we're looking at dot plots, we have median, mode, and range. Okay, And the mode is basically going to be the number that repeats the most. The number that repeats the most so in store two the number that repeats the most is gonna be that one right there and the number that repeats the more is that one right there the one it says the mode of store two is greater than the mode of store one is that true which number is bigger which number is bigger store no number look at the number so okay this is how we do it so you have how many zeros you have zero zero you have one 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 you have two 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 you have three 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 you have four you have five 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 you have six six for that one right and for this one we have zero 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 we have how many ones one two three four five six we have four twos we have two threes a four two fives and a six so which one repeats the most again in this one the one that repeats the most is that one and this one the one that repeats the most is the one so which one is the bigger number not how many more it repeated the bigger number in this case is two and this is not saying that this is saying that one is more than two and that's not true correct let's look at the range the range is going to be the bigger number minus the smaller number okay range is going to be the bigger number minus the smaller number the range of the data for store one is greater than the range of the data of store two range is going to be six minus zero which is six right range six minus zero which is six is one of them greater than the other one no for me they're the same the range is the same so it's not g the mean of the data for the store one is greater than the mean of the data for store two so this is where it gets a little complicated because we're gonna have, well, not necessarily complicated, but we will have to add everything on um, on both of the plots. So basically all the numbers that I use wrote down, we're gonna have to add them and divide them by the number of dots that we have. So on this one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. This is a total of 20 people. This one, we have four and six is 10. And four is uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, also 20. The total is 20, right? So let's go ahead and add everything up. So on the first one, we have three plus two plus two plus two plus two plus nine plus four plus ten plus ten 
plus 14. I mean 12. And that's 56. But we have to divide by how many? 20. Divided by 20, which is... 14 fits so 14 fits this is gonna be how many times does 5 go into 14 that's gonna be 2 14 divided by 5 this is going to be hold on times 3.5 when you multiply that 55 times 3.5 you get 192 miles and a half that's for the first like before the pit stop or whatever but then she got off the car walked for a little bit walked a little bit because she was tired or he was tired and then drove a little bit faster 60 miles per hour for 2.5 hours so 60 times 2 is 12 60 times 2.5 is 150 right so now what do you think we have to do to find the total what do we have to do to find the total because that's a keyword total distance what do you think we gotta do what does total means to do what add so we're gonna do 192.5 plus 150 this is 5 this is 2 this is 4 3 bring down the decimal and my answer is D that's how far she traveled if you don't if you have any questions about question number five please leave them down in the comments below if you haven't subscribed to my other channel, MTB Alex, please go ahead and check that one out. Just type in MTB, like mountain bike, Alex, MTB Alex, right there. Number six, which values from the set satisfies this inequality? So, inequalities, we did a, a, a problems about inequalities earlier uh, on the previous video, and today is not the exception on this case. So, inequalities. The only way to do this one is to solve it or, yeah, let's go ahead and solve it. If we solve this, let's see, inequalities. First things to remember, remember when you multiply or divide by a negative number, the sign is gonna flip. So basically look at if there's a number with a variable, in this case the letter X, is that number positive or negative? If it is negative, then your sign is going to flip. You're gonna have to remember that. That's one of the rules. Okay, in order to solve this, the first thing we gotta do is subtract three, and what I do to one side, I do to the other side. That cancels out, five minus three just gives me two. That comes down, and then I have one half x right so this whole thing is multiplying with the x or dividing by 2 so the opposite will be to divide by negative 1 half and what I do to one side must do to the other side okay so let's go ahead and do this. So dividing by half means to actually multiply by two, or you can just do this, two divided by negative one half, and then you can do the keep, change, flip, which is a longer process. So this will be two times two over one. You just put a one under, two times two is four, the bottom is one, negative and positive, makes a sad face, that's why it's negative, right? Negative 4 over 1 is just negative 4. Like I said, dividing by half is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So this side is negative 4. This side is x. But remember, what did we do over here? 
We divide it by a negative, right? So my sign has to flip. Now let's look at that. Look at that. The thing is that if you're looking for this answer, you're not going to find it because this literally means if you have a number line, you will have to graph this. Put the negative 4 somewhere over here. This is a closed circle. That means it includes everything lower than negative 4, including the negative 4. The negative 4 is an included answer. If you do not have the negative 4 on the answer choices, then it's not going to be a good answer. So this is not because it doesn't have a negative 4 in it. The negative 4 is included. You have to remember that. And then everything before that, so you have negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, negative 1,000, so forth, so on, right? But you cannot have negative 3. Nope. No, sir. So anything this way satisfies my answer. So let's look at this one. Look, you have some positives right there. No, it cannot be that, right? Can it be negative 3? No, because it's before the negative 4, so not that. So it's going to be J only. Because the negative 3 is behind or is before the negative 4, right? It's going on the opposite direction to what the arrow is pointing to. The arrow is pointing this way, not this way. So that's how you solve an inequality. Usually you have them with the number uh, number lines, but if you don't have a number line, it's really easy to construct. I have a full playlist about equations and inequalities. Make sure you check that one out as well. Let's move on to number seven. It says triangle RST is similar to triangle RVW. <laughs> What is the value of D in millimeters? So we're talking about proportions, and uh, we've done this in the past. As a matter of fact, I have a full playlist about proportionality, and it has a lot of videos in it. So in this case, with this type of shape is gonna throw a lot of you off because it says triangle, similar triangles, but you only see one triangle and then one line in the middle, right? So, what you have to do is actually look at the labels. So, it says triangle RST. So, let's do the green highlighter. RST is similar to triangle. Okay, this is RST. Similar to triangle RVW. Okay. So if you have different colors, this is going to be pretty simple because you can just make a line on the small triangle right there. And then you can make a line for the big triangle. But the thing is that they share too many lines, right? So that's a little confusing. So if you want, you can redraw the small one on the side and this is R V W and then label it it's telling me that from here to here is 10 millimeters it's telling me this right here look I'm gonna put a blue because I'm not using blue to label anything but it's telling me that from here to here is 5 so I know that this one is 10 okay I don't know this one but for the green one I know that this whole distance is 18 right so I can easily find this whole distance by adding them two together which is 15 wouldn't you agree so now we can do the tick marks, okay? We do the tick marks. So this is one tick mark, two tick marks. So the green is going to be one tick mark, 
and the bottom is going to be two tick marks. And then we're going to do the big over small thing, okay? So we're going to do big over small, and then we're going to use one tick marks, two tick marks, and we're going to label this like we have done many, many times. And then we can just do cross products or butterfly. So for B1, what number do I have for B1? In this case, I have 15. For B2, I have 18. It's at the bottom, right? Now for S1, I have 10. It's right here. It's right here. And for S2, I have the missing value, D. I don't know. I do not, I do not know what that is. And this is not one of the easy ones that you can use. Go ahead and um, see what can you multiply 15 by to get 18 because it's going to be a decimal, right? Now that you can you can see, you can see that the number on the bottom is smaller than the number on the top, right? So this number has to be less than 18. So if you look at the answer choices, you can go ahead and eliminate A. Easy, right? Because that's more than 18. And you know that it has to be smaller. 56 divided by 20 gives you 2.8. This is the mean. Now we're going to find the mean for the other one. So for the mean, we have how many ones? 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 6 is 20, 24, 34, 40. So the total is 40 divided by 20, which is 20. I mean two. 40 divided by 20 is two. So the mean equals two. It says the mean for the data of store one is greater than the mean for the data on store two. This seems like it might be my winner, right? My answer. So far, it is true. This is bigger than this. The median. How do you find the median? Y'all remember? You take away from both sides until you get to the middle, right? Let's just double check because that's the easiest thing to find on the dot plot. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. We're going to take away from each side until we get to the middle. And then we have two remaining, we add them up and find the average for that, right? So it'll be two plus three, and then we're gonna divide that by two. So the mean for this one will be, I mean the median will be 2.5. Then we're gonna do the same thing for this one. Cancel, 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 cancel. So we have two remaining, so the median will be 1.5. It's saying that this one is bigger than that one. Is that true? No. So my only answer was literally H. Yes, it takes a little bit of work, but it's not hard work. Just try not to be lazy, please, because when laziness strikes, you're going to get them wrong. If you haven't at this point, please go ahead and stop for a second, pause, go back to my channel, subscribe, notification, all that good stuff. Make a comment. If you have any questions about question number four, leave them down in the comments below. And let's move on to the next question, number five. It says, Perry travel at an average speed of 55 miles per hour for 3.5 hours. Then, travel at an average of 60 miles per hour for 2.5 hours. What is the total distance in miles that Perry travel during this time? This is unit rate. Unit rate. So, we're going to have to find, but this is actually pretty simple. To find how many miles 
she traveled right there. All we have to do is multiply, wouldn't you agree? 55 miles per hour. So that means in one hour, she's gonna go 55 miles. In 3.5 hours, she's gonna be 3.5 times as big, right, as far. So to do that one, let's do 55. Okay, so it has to be less than 18. So let's see. When we do cross products, we're gonna have these two multiplied, these two multiplied. So we're gonna have 15D equals to 180. And when you divide 180 by 15, because that's the next step, right? You gotta divide by 15 on both sides. You will get 12. So D, the missing value, is going to be 12 millimeters, which is going to be B. So this right here is 12 millimeters. Twelve millimeters, and it kind of makes sense because if you look at this right here, this is less than eighteen, so ten is less than twelve. It makes sense, right? It got a little bit bigger. So that's the way you do this ones. Again, if you do the tick marks and the and the label big over small or small over big you will not make a mistake and all you have to do is cross products make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so let's move on to number eight it says a bag contains color tiles every time they're talking about bags i know they're talking about um, probability and for probability it's always part over total you can just write that on the side right away i haven't even read anything but I know probability is just part over total. It says, we have three red tiles, six green, and three blue. A tile will be randomly selected from the bag. What is the probability in decimal form that the tile selected will be green? We don't have uh, answer choices. We don't have multiple choice, so this is a numeric response, okay? So this is, what is the probability that it will be green? Like I said before I even read anything, it's gonna be part over total. And I know that I have six green, right? I know that I have six green, so that's gonna be my part. My part equals six. My total is gonna be, how many do I have in, in all? In this case, 6 plus 3 is 9, plus 3 is 12. So all you got to do is 6 over 12. You can go ahead and simplify that, right? 6 over 12 is just 1 half. And we don't even need to do table. You can if you want to. Top and bottom out, 1 divided by 2. But I know half is literally 0 0.5. And that's it. That's my answer. 0 0.5, 50 cents. And this, uh, not, not talking about money, but you can compare it to that. How will you write this? Well, you have 0, 5, decimal, 0, 0, 0, 0, plus. This is your gridable. I believe if you just put in 0 0.5, you should also get it right. Also, if you put in 0 0.5, as long as you put it in the correct place, you will also get it right. But I want you to use decimal form. Any questions so far? This is a pretty simple question. They made it too easy. Number nine. A circle has a diameter. Before we talk about circles, I have a full playlist about circles. You can also find them on the areas and co of composite figures playlist and also on the circles playlist. So, a circle has a diameter of 7.5 feet. Which measurement is closest to the circumference in feet? 
The formula is also given to you on the formula chart that we saw at the beginning of the video. For circumference, we have two formulas. Pi times diameter or pi 2 pi r. D stands for diameter, R stands for radius. In this case, they gave us the diameter. And if they give you the radius, it's no big deal because radius is at the diameter. So for example, if the radius is two, the diameter is four. The radius is three, diameter is six, so four, so on, okay? So we're gonna use the, I always like to use this formula no matter what, okay? Because it's less things to multiply. Pi, the value of pi is always given to you. And it can be either one of those two. If they don't ask you to use one in a specific, use the one that you want. I like to use the decimal form all the time. So I'm just going to do 3.14 times 7.6. Multiply. That's it. I'm looking for circumference. That's it. Before we multiply this all the way, let's just go ahead and estimate, okay? This is 8. Let's estimate that to be 8. Estimate that to be 3. What's 3 times 8? 3 times 8. Huh? 24, right? Is this 24 right here on D? No way close, right? This is way off. Way off right my answer has to be a when the numbers are way off like that you might even want to stop right there because you estimated with some really good numbers now if you want to find it you, you we can find it six times four is 24 we carry the two six times one is six and two is eight six times three is 18 seven times four is 28 carry the two seven times one is seven and two is nine 7 times 3 is 21, and we add this up, and da, 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 we have 7, 3, 2. How many decimal places we have? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So it's 27.764. See, it's not even the, the, the straight up answer, right? Because you will round this to 23.7. 7 or 23.8 so the closest is going to be a regardless so you could have estimated and be, be, be good with it especially because these answers were so far off <laughs> next one number 10 a worker used 450 inches of steel wire to make 300 springs of the same size at this rate how many inches of steel wire will need to make one spring so we're gonna have to find the unit rate so we're looking for springs so all we have to do is divide 450 divided by 300 I can go ahead and eliminate the last zero on both of them if you want 30 goes into 45 one time. One times 30 is 30. You subtract, you get 15. You add a decimal. You add a zero. And you bring it down. And 30 goes into 150 five times. It's 150, and the answer is zero. Remainder is zero. So it's 1.5, which is one and a half, right? That's it for that one. The way you can see this is that if they made less springs, that less, look at the numbers. This number is less than the number of inches. So that means that you need more than one inch to make one spring. And this is right there. All of these are less than one inch. 
this is just uh, unit rates and also operations with rational numbers i have playlist for both let's see number 11 a ring toss toy is composed of a rectangular prism on top of a cylinder the rectangular prism is completely filled with water the dimensions of the rectangular prisms are shown in the diagram which is the volume of the rectangular prism in cubic centimeters volume equals area of the base times the height i have a full playlist about volume of prisms and pyramids make sure you check them out but i'm, I'm gonna leave a link for you over here in the card that is gonna show you a fast way to find the volume of a rectangular prism anything that looks like a box and that way is just to multiply the three numbers and you're done so 2 times 9 is 18 times 15 gives you 270 which is right there that's it or you can just find the area of the base you can just take this to be the base if you want so the b equals the area which is based on side which is 2 by 9 which is 18 look this number is the same as this one right there so this will take the place of that one and then the h is going to be the distance between the two bases which is 15 which ultimately gives you 270 as well again make sure you check those videos out they're really helpful this is a really simple question really easy easy questions for a rectangular prism value number 12 <clears throat> a college conducted a survey of randomly selecting freshmen about their choice of major the table shows the results of the survey so we have a table and we have statements we have to work it backwards we gotta read and see what happens so it says on one column we have what major they're gonna be taking and how many students are gonna be taking that major so for example 35 students are gonna major in science 40 students are gonna major in engineering 16 education so forth so on F, the number of freshmen who choose English as their major is less than the number of freshmen who are undecided on their major. So at this moment, we're comparing this and this. And he's saying that one is less than the other one. Look at these two numbers. Is one of them less than the other one? For me, they're the same. So no, it's not the answer. No. No they're the same G the number of freshmen who choose education as their major is greater than the number of freshmen who choose science or other as their major so we're comparing education with science and other so for education we have how many 60 and for science and other we have 55 right says that education is greater than science and other together is that true yeah 60 is greater than 55 so that might be my answer let's look at the other ones The number of freshmen who choose business or education. So now we're looking at business and education, which is 105, is less than the number of freshmen who choose science or engineering. So this two is how much? 75. Is 75 less than 105? No. Nope. The num J, the number of freshmen who choose business as their major. Now we're looking at business 
as their major is greater than the one who choose English. Business is 45 more than 50. Nope. My answer was indeed G. There's nothing else to do this but to work in backward and evaluate each one of those answer choices. Number 13, and I think this is the last one. Nicholas is buying shirts for his basketball team. He pays $9.50 for each of the shirts plus a one-time fee for the design. Which equation can be used to find Y, the total of the cost to buy X shirts? So we're going to have to write an equation from a word problem. And we're going to have to look at the keywords. Remember, every time he has the word each, every, uh, something like that is going to be, that number is going to go with the variable. And then if you're paying a fee, you're paying a taxi fare, you're paying one, uh, one, an entry ticket to a fair, something like that. That's just going to be counted once. And if you have to pay it, then you have to add it, right? So with that being said, I know that 950 each, that's going to be my variable, 9.5x. And then it literally says plus. So we're going to have 9.5x plus. So the number that goes with the variable is 1.5. Let's look at the answer choices. This one does not have that. They're backwards, right? And then we're adding right there. This one is subtracting twice. This one is subtracting. So the answer has to be A. We are adding a one-time fee of 22.50. So yes, my answer was indeed A. The, for this one, guys, the only trick that I can tell you to do is to remember your keywords. Remember your vocabulary, remember your keywords. If you remember that, you'll be fine. All right, guys, so that is it for today. I hope that you learned something today. If you did, please go ahead and turn the notifications bell on and match the subscribe button, like and share this video. If you haven't seen the other two, the part one and part two, make sure you check those out. If you want to check me out on Instagram, M Mr. Gomez.84, you can find me there. And check out my other channel, MTV Alex. Other than that, I really hope that you learned something today. That is going to be it for today. And I will see you on the next one. Goodbye.